So what we're doing now is we're going to have multiple images that are following the same functions as our first screensaver program. Um, I already started the app and you'll see that the smiley face was picked and they were put to random locations with random colors on the screen. So if I pick locations, it takes those current images and just moves them to random locations. If I pick colors, it takes a little while. My computer is working incredibly slow. I think this should be better at the school. Um, you'll see all of the colors change and the background changes. And then if I press the shapes button, also should be working faster at the school. We see that they stay in the same location, same colors, but they become different shapes. So we're gonna be coding that now. Um, there's a template to open. Um, and you will see the starting of this template has the same three buttons, but now it has 20 images. We have the same image options list. And the first thing you need to do, so if you need to pause the video, you can, is go back to your finished screensaver one image program and copy that code over. So I am now with the one image. This is what we made before, and I'm going to copy all of that code and go to this one. I'm going to have to delete a couple things. So if I look here, I already have the image options list here, but I also have it down here. So I'm going to delete the second one. Shouldn't really make a difference. Um, I'm going to move my two global variables up to the top. Otherwise, pretty much everything should be the same. So all of my code is written to move one image, but I want to move all of the images. And the first thing we need to notice is that this top list is the names of all the icons. So if I go to design and I click, I basically named all of the images just in order with those numbers. Don't know where they went, but they're back. So what we need to do is we need to start making these things happen in loops to the whole list. So I'm going to start here with this part of the program. I'm actually going to enter down so that we can focus. This is the part of the program. These two lines of code are what picks a random image index. Now noticing that's from the image options list, not from the icon list. And then it's setting icon zero to that image. Now, one thing we need to think about is do we want each shape or each icon to have the same shape? And the answer is yes. So I'm not going to keep picking random image indexes. I'm going to pick it once and then apply it to everything. So to apply it to everything, I get a for loop. I put this block inside. And in, not instead of going to for, we're going to go and set this to each or give this property to each of the icons. So I'm going to do from zero to icon list dot length and one small one short of that so that works we don't need to do the minus one then instead of setting the property of icon zero to go through each one just like when we were in the data tables we're going to use i because i goes through all those indexes so each of the icon list i i'm going to set the image to image option list at random index. Now, we haven't done anything else, but let's just see how this works. If I can press the run button. Okay, so it's bugging out a little bit, but we saw it for a second. And I think we just need to do more of the properties. Oh, there we go. Now it's working. So we see everything is a tiny little black tree except for the one that was changed. Basically, that's icon zero because that's the one that these two are doing. But we see it did work to at least change the shapes, which was the only part we've coded. So we're going to add that information to the associated shapes button that does the same thing. So I'm going to switch over to text mode. I'm going to copy my loop. I'm going to copy the random image index, even though it's already in there. And I'm just going to replace all the code in the shapes button with that code. Now, this should be enough that you should be able to apply this to each of the other parts. Um, I'm going to do the sizes next. So same deal. Pull out a for loop. This time I want each icon to have a different size. So I am going to put this variable inside my for loop. Unlike this one, I want all of them 
to have the same image. So I put it outside so it's picked once. This one I want different sizes, so I put it inside so each time through the loop it gets picked. So we're gonna do icon list uh, length and change this from just icon zero to icon list I so it gets applied to each thing. My eyes are capitalizing for some reason today. Okay. Now, I'm going to try this once, and my computer is running really slowly, so it's just taking time, even though I've pressed run for this to happen. So now I see, yes, the locations are changing. We haven't done colors. The sizes are different. That looks like it's good. So now I'm going to apply that to the associated button. So I'll copy this and then put it in my locations button being careful to replace everything. So now I'm gonna do the, the colors. Now, if we think about it, the home screen does not need to be set a bunch of times in the loop. So I'm not gonna put that in the loop. I'm gonna take out the loop and I'm only gonna set the colors of the icons. So I'm still gonna put this background color next to it. That does once, one background, but then we have all the icons that we wanna change their colors. So we're going to do the same type of code for that. So now if I run this, I should see that all of the colors change as well. A new background color as well as a new color for each icon. Okay. So copying this over into my event handler for the colors. I'm just going to fix, remember, spacing doesn't matter in JavaScript the same way it does in Python or indentation doesn't matter, um, but I'm going to make it just look nice. So right now, as I go over to my blocks, I'm also going to think about speeding this up a little bit. Right now, at the beginning of my program, I have three pretty long for loops running, but they're all the same loop. So I'm going to put all of these blocks of code into the same loop. This should, as I said, my computer is having some issues, but this should speed things up a little bit better, just not to have to go through all those loops. Um, just preference, I'm going to do the background color at the top. Um, it doesn't really matter where you do it because it's all kind of, you know, happening at once. So I'm going to pick my variable, I'm going to set the background color, and then I'm going to do everything else in the loop. So let's just see how this runs. So we should see, and we'll try each of the buttons this time. So I said, I've run this at school a bunch, and it seems to be much faster than this. So I see colors, locations, and shapes changing. Location seems to be the fastest. We'll pick a new shape that takes a little bit longer. Um, and then colors also take a little time for some reason on my computer. So we see they all change and the background color changed too.